Hi everybody, this is Father Warner de Souza, and we are on Monday of the fourth week of Easter. We are reflecting on Acts chapter 11, 1 to 18. Most Christians are prone to believing that there is only one and only one Pentecost in the Bible, namely the Jerusalem Pentecost, which has found its way in many works of art. Yet the Acts of the Apostles is called the Book of the Holy Spirit for precisely this reason that the book resounds with the work of the Holy Spirit descending on the church at several places and at several times. In the Acts we hear of the Samaritan Pentecost in chapter 8 and then again in chapter 10 we hear of the Gentile Pentecost. Thus making it clear as Peter said in chapter 10 verse 3 that God shows no partiality. But this fact was hard to digest for the circumcised believers the Jews who now followed Jesus. So what really was their problem? If you look at Leviticus chapter 11, it made it quite clear that one was prohibited from eating certain animals that the Gentiles had no problem relishing, the pig being one of them. For a Jew to sit at the very same table with a Gentile was itself unthinkable. To eat from the same table food that was prohibited was considered an abomination. So no wonder that Peter got anything but a hero's welcome when returning to Jerusalem. For he had gone down in the eyes of the Jewish Christians on two counts, irrespective of the successful mission that he had brought so many to the Lord. Peter does not take the criticism personally or give in to his own temper tantrums like he would have. The once knife-wielding, ear-cutting, aggressive man has now been transformed by his very own personal Pentecost. This is a transformed Peter with a gift of wisdom. For he now explains to them step by step the events that led him to not only go to the uncircumcised but also to eat with them. Make no mistake. The Holy Spirit requires our openness and Peter himself did not get the message all at once. The message that God wanted him to take his word and mission to the uncircumcised took him some time. By Peter's own admission, he says, three times he was told that what God had made everything clean and so he also could not call them profane. Peter acknowledges how long it took him to be open to the new direction that the Spirit was leading him to. And so he gets it when the disciples at Jerusalem are mad at him and reluctant to accept his actions so quickly. The church is clearly growing in the Acts of the Apostles. And chapter 10 and 11 labor this point through the vision of the centurion Cornelius who as a result called Peter to his home, a Gentile home. The two chapters labor thrice the story of Peter's own vision on the terrace where the Lord tells him that all has been created clean and not profane. For the church to grow, it needed openness of mind and heart. No longer could there be them and us, as we read in chapter 11, verse 12, the spirit that God gave the church in Jerusalem is the same spirit that he gave the Samaritans and the same spirit that he gave to the Gentiles in Acts 11, verse 15. It is the same gift, the words written in Acts 11, verse 17. We are told that the Jerusalem disciples were not only silenced, but that they praise God for the gift of the Spirit to the Gentiles. The closing verses of the pericope makes for several interesting reactions and I wish to focus on one, namely that Pentecost or the coming down of the Holy Spirit is primarily a gift given to believers. It is this gift that opens our hearts to welcoming others and celebrating even our differences with them. As the Jewish church did with the Gentile church, and we see this in the Acts of the Apostles, openness is not a matter of my personal will, but the willingness 
to be open to the promptings of the Spirit. With all the differences we have today in the world, in our nation, churches, families, we have inadvertently used the institutions we belong to to become stumbling blocks to the promptings of the Spirit. Think about what I said. And if you like these videos and they touch your life and the Spirit moves you, share it with others. I know by now many of you have subscribed to this channel, but if you haven't, I would love if you would do that. Thank you. God bless you and have a lovely day.